What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we end season 2026 with Audi and we head to Abu Dhabi in great spirits because in the last episode if you've missed it which was Las Vegas we managed to actually win a race this year somehow some way we managed to do it we managed to beat out the competition and get a win in Las Vegas Ocon coming through and Gasly getting second as well he was a bit more further back, but was in a real fight with Max and Lando to get that top two finishing position. But we managed to pull it off, and it was a fantastic race for everybody. If you haven't seen it, I'm sorry for the spoilers, but feel free to go check that out if you haven't seen that yet. But again, it was a fantastic performance in, in Las Vegas, and for us to pull out a win with the car in the way that we've got it wasn't exactly easy, but we managed to somehow pull it off. Fresh engines, I think, were a big combining factor for that. You can see pace-wise in the car, we are basically in the top echelon of the grid. Cornering, still not great, but again, I think the combination of the new engine and the top speed and DRS effectiveness has really pushed us forward um, with that last rear wing upgrade. That being said, going into Abu Dhabi, there isn't really anything to fight for at this point other than, you know, another podium or some race wins or something like that because we're now too far back on Ferrari to be able to possibly catch them. So it's really just about trying to have as good a result as possible, enjoying this last race and seeing what we can do budget-wise in terms of maybe upgrading our facilities at the end of the episode. Unfortunately for us, Esteban isn't going to be staying. He is leaving at the end of his contract. We have tried to offer him a new one, but unfortunately we aren't able we weren't able to to agree on a defense. So Esteban is leaving the team. Similar to what Bottas did at the end of last year. He won a race in one of his last races, winning in Brazil, famously our first race win as an F1 manager. And and now he's going on to passages new. So we'll see where he ends up at the start of next year. So with that being said, let's get into it. Let's see what we can do. Ocon is working with a couple of parts which are a little bit older. Um, so he, on his car, has an older underfloor and suspension, which does really affect his cornering performance, but hopefully it won't affect it that much. And again, the reason why we haven't built the new components is because we literally have a million left in the cost cap, which is reducing next year, by the way, to 134 million because of everyone voting for a lower cost cap because they are morons. So <laughs> let's see what happens there. But yeah, let's get into qualifying. Let's see what happens and let's see where we're going to start our final race of 2026. So as you can see, a decent qualifying position again in 6th and 8th with Pierre and Esteban. But you can also see that there are four people above us in the final race of the season where basically positions are pretty much done and dusted still taking new engine components, so still fighting for race wins and wanting to take it as far as they can. Charles will be starting in first, so as we know, Charles is a good starter in the races, so we'll have to be wary of it um, and whether or not we can get in front of him. But yeah, Pierre and Esteban, second and fourth on the grid, it looks like, to start off with, so let's see what we can do early on. So I told a bit of a lie. Esteban will be starting in eighth, not in fourth, so Pierre... We'll be leading the team for the front, and let's see what we can do. We can see front row there for Pierre. Let's see what he can do up against Charles Leclerc. And hopefully, we can have a good start as he doesn't quite get in front of Charles, but he's now side-by-side side with the Astons. We are going for a two-stop strategy, uh, pushing a little bit harder on the softs early on, hopefully helping us stay in front of the chasing pack, and then a hard stint in the medium, and then and then a medium stint at the end. So, yeah, let's hope we can have a good start to the race and see if we can get maybe back-to-back -back podiums. That would be nice. Let's see if we can do that this this race. Um, but so far, so good. And as you can see early on, we're just about keeping afloat with, with Charles, not drifting too far back at this moment. If we can cling on to the time we get to DRS, we know how effective our DRS can be, and thankfully... We have been able to do so. So the DRS opens up. Let's see how quickly we bring the time down. Already down to half a second by the end of that long straight. So that DRS is going to keep us well in contention, I think. As long as we keep close to Charles, we should be in a good position. As we go side by side on the inside of that corner and make an overtake and go into first position. And Ocon still struggling back in eighth. But Pierre showing us what he can do as he's going to be the leader for next season. 
And now we're going down the long straight. Charles isn't able to make an overtake, though, with the DRS. And four laps in, pretty happy with where we're at. I mean, there is a bit of a gang up behind us and Charles. So hopefully as the laps go on, we'll be able to make the most of that. Um, but yeah, at the moment, we're staying competitive. And that's all we can ask for, really. And Verstappen and Joe have run wide, which has caused Ocon to go up to seventh. And Ocon chasing down Verstappen as well, whilst Pierre's leading the line. And if we can get Ocon in front of Verstappen, we can start chipping away at the top five as well. And maybe getting Ocon up there, fighting for a podium himself as he goes around the outside there on that turn. But doesn't quite make it stick at this moment in time. But we're in the fight. That's the main thing. You can see Esteban with the DRS trying to get side by side with Verstappen, but doesn't quite make it happen. Gasly pushing the gap now between himself and Leclerc to one and a half seconds. And we're six laps in and still looking great. And Gasly's continuing to increase that gap over Leclerc. And Ocon now trying to fight both Verstappen and Piastri and gets himself into the top five. And will continue to chase down those podium spots as Norris now up ahead. Less than a second between him and Esteban. So let's see if Esteban can keep pushing for top three. So Perez has now got in front of Leclerc and is trying to chase us down. He's already chipped it down to about two seconds. The gap was about two and a half. So Perez trying to put his foot down here and get catch up to us. But Gazi again really managing these tyres quite well and keeping himself at arm's length from an overtake. And again, just working on Ocon's gap over Norris. And see if we can get him back into the top four. Ten laps down. And we're looking good. We've just entered the pit window now in lap 12. And again, not much to report other than then we're approaching the, the pits now. Three laps to go. And both guys doing really well. And there's been a yellow flag weird. It's Albon locking up on turn 13. But thankfully for us, it's not something that we're too concerned about. As he's down in 15th at the minute. So... Obviously, if there was a safety car, then we'd bring ourselves in to go on to the newer tyres. But apart from that, that's the only way it would affect us. But Ocon's gap has increased about a second and a half. And maybe just the tyre performance is starting to run a little bit. But again, we're in a really good spot either way. So we've just got to try and make sure we do the work in the second half. Or the second stint of this race, I should say, with the hard tyres. And make sure we don't drop off too far. And then we can push on those medium tyres for the end with a bit of performance that we have spare. So let's see how these pits go. So Gazi now comes in for his pit stop at the start of lap 16. Ocon will be coming in next. Go on to hard tyres and it's a slow pit stop. So that will hurt us. But there's been a crash in the main straight apparently. I don't know who is involved. It's Russell. So we'll have to see what that means for us as we come out just behind him. So we're going to be coming out in 11th. Oh, no, we come out just in front of him. Oh, that was good timing. So we get out just in front of Russell. So we're going to try and heat these tyres up as quickly as possible and keep pushing. Try and get Ocon in now as well for his hard stint. So, yeah, good stint from Ford to Foyes. And let's see where we go from here. So Bottas is the face of the leading pack, really, to come in. And he's coming on to hard tyres as well. So... If Looks like the strategy we've employed might be what a few of the few of our competitors are going for as well. And again, Gazi now, this is the important part of this stint. The early part is to try and get as close to these guys as possible before the pit stops happen. And once we're in that sort of once we're in that, that sort of five second gap, that's in a that's a good spot for us. So yeah. Eighteen laps down, and we're doing well. As Ocon gets in front of Russell, let's watch that replay. And he goes down on the inside. Russell having problems on those soft tyres. But Esteban gets past him and gets back into the top 10. So Esteban now looking to do the same and chip away at these guys in front. And Gasly passes Stroll pretty easily there. And now the first two of Leclerc and Perez come in. Let's see how close we are to them by the time we come out. Don't forget, of course, we had a five-second pit stop, which will have hurt us. And we're going to be in front. So, yeah. Gasly's done the, done the hard work and got himself a pretty pretty good gap. Leclerc is on hards. And Perez is on soft. So Perez might get the... Might pick up the pace and get in front of us pretty early on. 
But at this moment in time, I'm pretty happy with where we're at. As a yellow flag gets waved, and that might hurt us because that might bring Piastri Norris, although they've passed the pit stop mark there. So if a safety car had come in, it would have hurt them more than it would have hurt us, and we would have had a bit of luck there, but thankfully not to be the case. And Ocon, now into lap 22, we've now managed to get in front of Stroll. Going down the inside on that DRS straight, and goes up into seventh, so... Continuing to pluck away at this, and Piastri now coming in for a pit stop, and that'll move us back up into the top three. And now we've got 10 seconds to try and make up on Norris and Verstappen, who may be going for a one-stop here. They might, that's what they might be going for, but we'll have to wait and see. But again, it's trying to cut down this 10-second gap as quickly as possible. Even if we lose out to Leclerc and, and Perez early on, we are still in a good position. We've just got to keep chipping away at it. Leclerc looking to go around the outside of Gasly, and he does make the move. But we get the DRS back. I don't know if we'll make the move back again, but we go looking around the outside of the Red Bull, much like Ocon did with Verstappen, but it doesn't quite work out this time. But again, if we if we click onto the back of Leclerc, we're still in for a fight of the podium or the win, so that's the, that's the main objective now for Gasly, to try and keep on the back of Charles like he did on the early stints of the race. But we've already drifted away over a second on Charles already in the early stages of the next lap of him overtaking us. And Perez is now going to make the move with Ocon five seconds behind. So, again, don't need to be pushing too hard. But at this moment in time, it's looking like we're in for a podium at least. And maybe when pit stops happen or if a safety car comes in, that might change. But at this moment in time, it's looking like podium at the most for us at the moment. So Norris and Verstappen both come into the pits and we should have a, a decent chunk of change in terms of time on them as we're passing them now. You can see them just coming out there. I don't know what Norris and Verstappen are going on to. I would suspect hard tyres. I think Verstappen might be on the softs, you know. We'll have to wait and see. Norris on the hards, Verstappen on the hards. So again, a decent gap from Gasly to Norris and Verstappen so we can use that to our advantage. And, of course, we've got the buffer of Ocon as well to try and defend with. So we'll see how this plays out as we're approaching the halfway point of the race now. And you can see now on the pictures, Ocon has just got in front, or he's still just in front, I should say, of Lando. And, again, we'll have to see what he can do in terms of staying in front. We are going to try and deploy the ERS to help him out a little bit here. But I think Lando's going to get him quite convincingly. And then Lando might be chasing us down for that last podium spot, which would be a shame. Because I'd like to get another podium. But Ocon does come back at him and keeps him back just a little bit longer. And Ocon battling side by side now with Lando as Lando gets in front. And manages to hold on to the fourth spot there. But Ocon now, his main, like we said with Gasly before with Declare, if he can keep a hold of Lando for as long as he can. But Lando's already stretching away and, and starting to... Starting to earn that uh, that that pace, and yeah, Verstappen now a second and a half behind, so Ocon might be dropping down to six in the next lap or two. And again, we're keeping the gap to about two seconds to clear, trying to chip down that gap, and also trying to bring up the ERS to go for another push with that as well. And you can see Norris is just a little bit way in the distance there. He's two and a half seconds back. We've got about nine laps to try and keep as close to these guys as we can because that's when our next pit stop comes in for those medium tyres as Albon himself, as we mentioned, pit stops, has a pit stop issue. And yeah, we uh, again, we had a good start. The middle stint hasn't necessarily been as quick as we would have liked, but we're still on the shout of a podium here and, and we're certainly going to try and push for that with the rest of this race as we've got about 26 laps to go. So Gazi now getting hounded by Norris down the DRS straight. And you can see side by side with him. And Norris does nick in front. And the gap is about three and a bit seconds to Leclerc, who himself is uh, trying to chase down Perez, who's on half-used half used softs at the minute. So, again, you'd think that gap should in the next few laps start to creep in. But, again, we're not that far back on Perez so that when we do pit eventually in a few laps... When we go into those mediums, we should be in a good spot still to try and get that podium. But again, Norris, with the much newer tyres, showing the pace that he's got. And yeah, if we can cling on to the back of him and Verstappen whilst they clamber onto the into the clear, if not, try and slow them down a little bit. 
then obviously that helps us when we come onto the mediums a little bit later in the race. So, yeah, doing really well. A good gap between Ocon and Bottas as well. And, yeah, we've just got to keep keep pushing as we are and, and see where we end up. And now you've got Gasly being overtaken by Verstappen. But, again, Verstappen's not exactly shooting away at the minute. But Norris is up the road by a second and a half within a couple of laps of taking over us. So, it is what it is. Perez now coming in to replace his soft tyres. Let's see what he replaces them for. Goes on to medium. So, Perez trying to do a 21... Uh, 21... Yeah, 21 laps on, on those mediums. Again, we've got probably another lap or so before we decide to do anything um, with that. As we get the DRS, thankfully, on Verstappen to try and claw that back a little bit. And again, we've got about an eight-second gap on, on Perez, so... He's the guy that we're obviously trying to overtake with the final stint on the mediums um, and see if we can come back against these guys and get back on the podium. Interesting development. Perez had yellow tyres on in the pit stop, but now he's on hards. Don't know if I'm just going colorblind or what, but Perez is on the hard tyres, so that might help us as well when we go on to the medium tyres, which I'm going to pull in Gasly in and get him to do a bit of an earlier pit stop and get him go on the attack for this last lap um again we're looking at ocon at the minute three seconds already the gap to verstappen but we'll bring gazi in here and get him on the mediums and give him about 19 laps or so to try and get cut down that time to the guys in front um and see where we're at by the end of this race a pretty clean pit stop there from gazi and he's going to have 18 laps now to try and charge down the ferraris and the red bulls and the mclarens as well because he comes out behind Bottas and De Vries, but still in a pretty good position. So, yeah, let's see what he can do with a better tyre and a quicker tyre on the guys in front. Oh, and he goes down. <laughs> that was a that was a naughty move as he gets in front of De Vries there somehow, but De Vries coming back at Bottas as well as Gasly. And, yeah, it's not going to be an easy one here for, for Gasly, but he has good pace, so let's see what he can do early on. Gasly coming back at these two now, looking to go down the inside of Bottas, and he makes that one work and trying to go around De Vries, who's on pretty used medium tyres now, and he does. And now that 14-second gap with about 16 laps to go is Gasly's main concern. Can we cut this down, and can we get in touch with the podium guys by the end of this race? And this might be it for the race, folks. We've got about 15 laps left. A 13-second gap between us and Perez. Ocon's not too far behind Gasly either. And, yeah, we're we're a little bit afloat now. And it's kind of tricky to see where we're going to make up enough pace and time consistently to get in front of at least two people to get on the podium. Um, again, the Claire has to pit before the end of the race. We know that. But again, the gap is still over 20 seconds, so he's probably comfortable in the fact of when he pits, he'll be fine to still be in front of us and he'll be on fresher tyres as well. So, yeah, a tricky one to be in. But again, if something something can happen between Norris and Verstappen where maybe they collide a little bit, um, and as I say, that Leclerc now comes into the pit stop, um, and I think we're just going to be a little bit far back to get in front of him. And he's going to be on soft tyres as well. So even if we did get in front of him, it's not it's not going to be for a very long time. Um, and yeah, it's uh, over to Perez and Core to see if he can get in front of them and, and cause some disruption to those guys in front. But again, fifth and sixth is a solid result. Not the result we probably hoped for with the qualifying position we have with Gasly. Um, but yeah, let's see how this final stint goes on these medium tyres. So we've got 10 laps to go and we've just had a notification come up on Gazi's gearbox. It's showing some minor wear now, um, which isn't surprising because it's on 39% and Ocon's probably going to pull away here and get up into fifth. Um, though Gazi is going to come back with the use of DRS. Um, and yeah, the clerk's chasing down Perez. But again, the gap is still about 10 seconds or so on Perez for, between us and, and him. So again, I think unless something happens between the top two, a podium isn't going to happen today, unfortunately. But we've got eight laps to go. And yeah, let's see what happens. See if something, some luck can come our way and maybe the top two take themselves out. So as you can see, Gazi's still sitting and is now dropped down to six. 
Ocon has got in front of his teammate and has pushed to try and get in front of him. And again, just trying our best to try and keep ourselves in this position so that if something does happen in front of us, we can maybe take advantage of it. But again, we've got six lap laps to go. Leclerc is the quickest man on track at the minute. Fastest lap he's just pumped in. And it's whether or not he can catch up um, to his teammate and to Norris, although he's only a few seconds back. So it's not out of the realms of possibility. Charles starts the race in first and ends it in first as well. So as you can see now, Verstappen leading the race with a few laps to go. Charles goes down the inside of Lando behind him. And Charles is going to get that DRS again and probably take first position here from his teammate. And he does. And he moves up into first. And it's a Red Bull 1-2 for now. With Perez sniffing behind the other two on newer hard tyres. And again, we're just too far back, I think, to make the most of this situation. And our tyres aren't exactly in peak condition either. So we just have to take what we can get and we'll take fifth and sixth. Um, which, again, isn't a bad result for us. And that's kind of it's kind of where we've been for the majority of the season, really. We've been sort of in that fifth, sixth, seventh position a lot of the time. So, again, it's... Uh, you know, it's kind of the medium of, of what we've done in the year. Um, and hopefully next season we can kick on from that and maybe fight for top four on a more permanent basis. So here we go then. The final lap starts. Perez is a second or so behind his old teammate in Verstappen trying to get an old podium. And I don't think he's going to have enough pace in the tyres to get there. He's got... He's just outside of DRS, unfortunately, though. Verstappen is trying to get back in front of Lando as well. But everything is going to resume or remain as it is, basically. Um, but, yeah, let's take a moment here to appreciate Ocon doing his final lap for our team. He's been here since the second season. And at the end of 2026, he will call time on his... On his racing with Audi. And he's going to come in ahead of his teammate Gasly and finish in fifth. But what a fantastic tenure it's been for our team. And yeah, that will be it for 2026. And there we go. Confirmation of the result. 18 points added to our final constructors tally. Max running away with the, the Drivers' Championship. Esteban managing to jump above Perez there at the end of the season with his win um, and managing to finish in the top six and Pierre doing a, f a good job as well, finishing in eighth. And yeah, what could have been with the constructors really? And we only finished 53 points behind Ferrari. So again, not a massive drop for us in comparison to last year. Obviously we finished third last year um, and this time we, we finished fourth, well ahead of Alpine and Aston Martin. Though it did look at one point they were going to chase us down, but thankfully we were able to sort of, you know, manage manage our upgrades a little bit better than we have done in the previous in previously, and yeah, we managed to we managed to take top four and the prize money and win tunnel time that comes with it, and yeah, let's see what we can do with twenty twenty seven. So we've managed to get the chassis research completed in time for the end of the season, um, and we'll also get. A few more. We'll get another front wing, rear wing, and side pods, side pods research done as well in time for the end of the end of the year, and we're going to get a bit more influx of cash as well when we get into the beginning of December, and we'll take a look at what we can do in terms of upgrading facilities from there, as we get a performance boost as well from one of our race engineers. Oh dear, <laughs> we've actually gone over the cost cap, ladies and gentlemen, by about. What is that? By an extra million. That must be because of facilities then. That's the only thing I can think of is that the extra, f the upgrades we've gone to facilities increase the cost. So we'll see what that means in terms of, uh, in terms of what comes next, basically. Um, because that could spell serious damage in terms of our wind tunnel time, in terms of finances for next year. We've got 30 million to spend and we might have to spend it before we get into the next season. Um, I was going to take a quick look at facilities whilst whilst we were finishing up um, this year. And one of the ones I wanted to do was that and that. 
and then that those two on its own will give us a pretty big boost in terms of performance in the car for upgrades next year. And in terms of this, we look pretty good as well and going to improve in a few areas and hopefully that helps us go into the next season and we can maybe take advantage of January and February trying to upgrade those a little bit further as well. So, yeah, um, we go back down to 12 million after, and then we get a cost cap fine so if I the size of the fine is based on how far all the cost cap goes, we'll also receive a fair fine every month that we continue to exceed the cost cap. A summary of the fine can be found below and you'll see this cost reflected on monthly finances. So we get fined essentially the same amount, so 963000 It's the first time we've ever gone over the cost cap, to be fair, and it isn't a massive amount we've gone over, is it? So We completely upgraded on the wind tunnel, though. So that goes up, and you can see the improvements we get there in terms of the drag reduction, low speed, medium speed. Hopefully that helps us out, and we get both our side pods and rear wing research completed as well. So here we go then. DHL fastest pit stop, we come in seventh. Again, a bit of a step back in the pit stops this year. We haven't really been able to progress that, but hopefully next year we can try and figure it out and and get back into the top five. Um, low confidence, medium confidence from the team. Again, we know eighth and sixth from Gazi and Ocon, fourth in the constructors. Team rating goes up again to a full four stars. And in terms of team principal rating, we do go down by 50 points. So that'll probably hurt where we could potentially go next. And we get medium confidence, so an extra 750 grand. So we go up to about 14 and a half million in terms of what we can do next. And in terms of regulation changes, we get, of course, the gearbox, ERS, and engine limits increased by one. And there is a minor technical change in, per in terms of the aero for drag, airflow, for front wing, rear wing, side pods. All that good stuff and the cost cap goes down by an extra five million so bearing in mind what we've just seen and that we've triggered the cost cap we might have to be a bit more frugal in 2027 so as you can see our new season objective for this year heading into 2027 is to get top four again long-term objective has to be met this year as well which is to get podiums in 25 percent of the races Again, I think with the research we've done, we should still be in a good position. And with how we've built the team up to this point, we should be able to get at least a handful of podiums. And then it's just whether or not we can match with the top guys consistently over the course of the year. If we can get the DRS and the speed early and then work on that corner, and like we did in 2025, we should be in a good spot. But again, it's going to be a long, hard road to get that. And again, I hope you'll join me for 2027, folks, because it's going to be a fun time with Porsche taking over that second seat. And of course, Oliver Behrman taking that seat in reserve driver as well. And again, if you've been watching F1 in real life as well, you'll have seen he did a fantastic job in that Ferrari. So hopefully we can develop him into a good driver for us maybe in the future as well. As always, folks, if you do enjoy these episodes and you enjoy the series so far, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Again, we're only 30 or so away from the big 1,000 mark, and that's not been at all possible to get to this point without your guys' help. So if you do enjoy these episodes and you want to see more from the channel, please, please do consider subscribing. We are also dabbling in some WWE content as well with the new 2K game coming out. So if you want to check out some of those videos, there'll be a link to a video at the end of this video as well. But yeah, I just have to say at the end of this season, we're five seasons in now. Um, and again, I just have to say thank you to everybody, obviously, that's subscribed, that's watched the videos, um, that stuck with us through some of the uh, maybe more boring races that we've had and maybe boring times where we've not been fighting for wins or podiums. Um, but hopefully 2027 will be the start of that championship push with, one of, with at least one of the drivers. And we'll have to see how Fio can do as well. Um, but yeah, let's see what we can do in 2027 and I'll see you there for the next episode. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.